But meat, we're talking about red meat, steak especially is good in cholesterol. Now, depending on the cut you get, might be higher, you know, saturated fats and cholesterol, but you're going to get some good cholesterol out of it and those good fats. And at that point, that's where it kind of stems from. So that would be my take would be red meats. Like if I was going to raise my testosterone levels or I was thinking about doing it naturally, I would go with, you know, a carnivore diet per se. And then at that point, retest. Now, diet is not going to get you from 200 to 900. I don't care. You can eat all the superfoods in the world and your diet's on point to a million percent. I've never seen anybody do that kind of a jump. 100 points, 150 points, definitely. I, I think that people can raise their levels that much. But at that point, like, you know, it's going to deteriorate every year. 1% after 30 is what they say. And even more, depending on where your level's at, depending on where you're going to go. So, you know, really, it depends on the person. I, I guess getting that baseline, seeing what's going on. And then if you say, hey, listen, I don't want to take testosterone. So why don't we try something different? Clean up your diet, start doing a carnivore diet and then retest same time, right? In the morning or at night, whatever you're doing the blood test and test it exactly the same way. And I think if you do that, you're going to get some, you know, you're going to get some more data back at where it really looks like where your level's at and where it's going to start, you know, tearing off at. I, I think that it's funny because it's, again, I think lifestyle has a lot to do with it and how you train and again if you are eating well and you have that tightened lifestyle you'll be able to keep your testosterone at obviously at a higher level than the twin of you that's sitting on the couch eating doritos all the time right. so you know you got the two individuals and i, I love the old uh, vince garandi um talking about nutrition and training. I'm going to pull Jeffrey. Jeffrey, give me that uh, little Vince, old school Vince Garanda. He's known for creating steak and egg diet. Yes. He, oh. What yeah. year was that? What year did he come out? He had to be that late 60s, 70s. 60s, right? Yeah, well, it was like 65. Already hmm. knew then that you could bump up your testosterone by eating a certain way. I love that. And like, Fats, like big fats, like butter, cream, half and half, red meat. He's big on all of that. And he's huge, again, cholesterol, eggs. Cholesterol. That, that's the main big, thing. Uh, three, three dozen, three dozen a day. Wow. <laughs> Damn, I want to eat three dozen eggs a day. That's good. <laughs> right. Obviously, you don't have to do that level. You don't have to do that. But the point I just wanted to make for everybody that's here today is that your nutrition does play a role absolutely and, and so if 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 you change your nutrition boom that's you're up another level you you train correctly and, and enough during the week to stimulate the body again you're bumping it then mm -hmm. let's optimize it with titan medical and see what your blood work is and see what they can do and now you just bump three folds three yes. folds Yes. From where you're at right now, three folds. And you, so you're talking about, Hey, I want to change. Well, I'll just change the one. Th well, let's change all three this week. Let's, let's start to, let's start to level up a little bit. Everybody. We got three mm -hmm. weeks to the Olympia. So let's level mm -hmm. up today and go mm -hmm. change the nutrition, check your blood. And like what Johnny said, check it at the same time, change your yep. nutrition and test it again. Yep. Um, so I just, I just really want to, jump on that one this morning uh, uh how do you make your uh have so the next question is how do you make sure you have optimal nutrition and vitamin levels okay that's a, that's actually a good one for you johnny good question yeah for sure so optimal nutrition right you need to get so much of your macros and your protein, your fats and your carbohydrates. That's one thing we need to look, we'll look at, right? But, you know, in your foods of the day, how do you know you're getting enough vitamins and let's say amino acids, you know, the, what the body needs per day. And it's kind of tough, right? Unless you're like the best eater out there and you've got all the time in the day to really plan your foods. Um, it, it's kind of tough to get everything that you need. And that's where supplementation really comes into play. Right? That's where type medical injectable vitamin amino acids might come help you. And then testing to see where these things are at, right? Because, you know, when we start looking at it, we can start really like looking at different vitamins we want, different amino acids through blood testing and see where those levels are at. Um, but I think that, you know, getting your nutrition on point to we're eating healthy meals, 
let's say three to four meals a day, just start at three. If you're just getting started, get those three meals in and then start, you know, when you're hungrier, you can have a fourth or fifth meal. But at that point, making sure it's a healthy meal, right? Getting those balance of the macros that we talked about. And then at that point, you know, getting, you know, enough fruit, which also in turns would be fiber too, as well, that you need to add to the diet, that roughage. I mean, I was talking about that today and like, um, you know, for us, it's like 30 grams, like for a guy, that's, that's, what's optimal, yep. 30 grams of, of, of fiber per day. And for girls it's 22 grams, um, for the average American right now, we only get 18 grams. So that's better than I thought it would be. Way that's better. way better than I thought it would be. That's what the average is. Yeah. Through the, through, and I'll send you, I'll send you over the study on it. Cause I was just reading the study before my live about it, which was really, really cool because people are like, listen, how do I get fiber in my diet? And we started talking about like flaxseed and then we started talking about like, you know, like different fruits that you could get it from. Like apple has five grams of fiber per apple, right? And that might be different from the smaller size to a bigger size, six grams from a pear. And I love pears. So right there, you boom, you, you, you've got some of the work right off the bat. Um, and then, you know, you can start looking into different things too, as well, like supplementation that for fiber, fiber lies where you can like put it right into a drink and drink fiber down. Like I know people do yeah. that, like older people and stuff like that. Miralax, like different things to, to get you to go. Um, I, I think that's a big thing. And obviously like, you know, having your vitamins and everything on point, like you were talking about, like we've talked about it many times, vitamin D, which isn't really a vitamin, it's a hormone, but you know, at that point, making sure that's a good level and, you know. And the way that we usually get vitamin D is from foods, or they say from sunlight. Get 15 minutes of sunlight every day and you should be good is what they say. But I mean, I, I put that out there for a challenge for anybody out there. Go ahead and see what how much sun you can get and then blood test and see what your vitamin D level is at. Majority of people come back low or deficient on vitamin D levels every single time. And they could be on vacation for a whole week went outside with no sunscreen and got all the sun in the world and it just didn't convert in their body like it should have. So this is something that, you know, you need to look at, right? And if you have anything off, it could be causing you issues. You might not even know it's off or you might not have a provider that's even looking for these things. They might just tell you to change your diet, get a good diet. But even that, a general practitioner, you know, whether it's an APRN or a medical doctor or a DO, I mean, most of people have no nutritional knowledge. So they couldn't even tell you what to eat. I remember a doctor telling a person, like a person asked me, hey, listen, what should I eat for weight loss, doctor, with these medications that I'm taking? You know what that doctor said? I want to slap him upside his head. McDonald's? He no, he told him to eat soup slowly. Well, okay, there you go. All right. I like, I like these doctors. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, have your yeah, protein like, and then eat your carbohydrates, then take in your fat, and then you yeah, take goes, it in 10 minutes apart and then have warm water with yeah, some yeah. lemon. Yeah, he goes, he goes, eat, eat it slowly. And, and then I go, why would you tell that patient that? Like, that's not like optimal for weight loss. He's like, well, because, you know, if they eat it slowly, they become fuller faster. I'm like, that's great, but they're getting no nutrition out of this. We just talking. Oh, man, I'd be, I'd be in the, uh, what is it, uh, boy RD or the Chucky yeah. beef one? Yeah. That's what I'd be eating. Doc, you said I could lose weight on this. I'm getting 400 grams of protein with that beef. And how many grams of how, many, how much milligrams yeah. of sodium you get in that? You know, right? You look like a balloon um, the next day. Johnny is so nice. That's the one thing. Johnny is very, very nice about this. It, uh, for me to answer the question, um, how do you know you're doing optimal nutrition? you're getting stronger. You're looking different every couple of weeks. That kind of tells you what it is. Um, strength is a very good gauge on, on that. You're training enough, but not too much, but you're also, um, you're taking enough calories. So that's, that's, right. uh, that's one way to do it. Now, how do you know that you're getting enough vitamin levels? Honestly, I don't think you do. I think there's no way except to get some uh, blood work like I did. And it woke my ass up after doing yeah. supplementation for decades. Yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, oh, when I do this test, I'm going to be top notch everything. And I came back and I take my vitamins. I, yeah. I take my aminos. You guys see the drink every day. Yeah. Yeah. Still low, still low. Yeah. So I think do the blood work. Do Definitely. the blood work so you can kind of see what you're doing. Uh, and then check the total blood work on uh if the nutrition is treating you right yep. and the supplementation is treating you right so that's the third fold to this question yep. good question though yeah no great question <sighs> 
Okay, so how do I balance weight training and aerobic training? How can I, how do I balance that out? I mean, a balance for me, I guess, is would set your weight with weight training days and on your off days, maybe do your, your cardiovascular training, your, you know, your anaerobic training. You could do it same day too, I guess. What I would do though is I would do my weightlifting training first because I wouldn't want to fatigue the muscles that I'm trying to really like, you know, put some real major effort into and then do some cardiovascular training afterwards. You know, that's, that's how I would, I would lay it out. And I'm just being honest with you guys. I don't do any cardiovascular training. So at that point, like it's bad for my heart. I should probably be doing cardiovascular training for my heart. But as far as what I do and stuff like that, like I would just, I would burn too many calories. I just burn way too many calories and I can't get enough food in my day right now uh, to be able to grow like I want to. So if I start burning calories like crazy and using my body as a furnace, then I'm just going to go into a deficit. And, you know, at that point, like, I don't want to do that. So that's kind of what it was. Cause I was a big runner. All the way up until I was like maybe like 21, 22. And at that point, the guy what told were you me, running from? No, I was just a runner. I love to run. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. John, uh, Jeff, you got any input on that one? He was running from something. <laughs> he was running from club to a club, I think. <laughs> That's right. I was running, you, you know, a guy that a guy that really taught me uh, uh, to – he really opened up my eyes, right? He, he, he taught me to eat clean for sure because at that point I was training really hard. And I was training with him and he was like professional. Like, and he was just, he was like, dude, you're eating McDonald's. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, you go in there and bust your butt for an hour and a half with me. And this is what you want to feed yourself to recover. I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. So that was one big eye opener for me. Like right off the bat, I'm like nutrition wise, but you know, and the other aspect, it's like, you know, you got to be consistent about things too. And that's kind of where, what he taught me to be consistent on these different things. Um, I agree with Johnny on this. Uh, the question was, uh, again, uh, how do you balance uh, weight training with aerobic training? And for me, it, I think whatever plan that you're on, there'd be, if it's off season, you wouldn't do the aerobic training. And if you're getting in shape, then you're doing the aerobic training along with it. And like Johnny said, I weight lift first, then cardiovascular after. And you know, the thing about it was, was when he told me, I'm sorry if you're offering me, but he told me, that, hey, he's like, cut out cardio. Don't do it anymore. It's like you'll start gaining real quick, and that's kind of what happened to me for sure. I think we, the the new age kids believe that you have to do cardio. I think they're scared. I, I, I that's wow, that opened up a can of womb. Um, <laughs> I think everybody's scared nowadays about everything, and so I think yeah. it's interesting to see a a a basics, you know, pencil neck skinny guy right on my page. Oh, you see, you don't do cardio. You're and it's like you're 20 years old, a buck five. Are you worried about your heart? Holy sheesh. Right. Um, hmm, interesting. Interesting. Um, misinformed again. They don't know because they don't know. Or they yep. don't know. Ignorant, uneducated. Okay. Um, this is a young lady, and she would like to know how to get lean and muscular as a female, but not swole. Tips, Wait, please. Geez. Weight train. I mean, that's, that's a big one. Weight train, protein, you know, get that diet on point, you know, get the carbs in. I mean, you don't have to go crazy, but, and just cause I'm saying weight train doesn't mean that you're going to blow up and get jacked. I think that's a, the common misperception with females and it always has been. I mean, for like Isn't last conception years. with males as well though. Well, yeah, I guess so too. Yeah, you know, you've seen guys going to the gym for years training and they don't get swole. This is true. This is yeah, very so, true. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's a common misperception from people that think that they're going to go to the gym and start weight training for a year and they're going to turn to Arnold Schwarzenegger or one of these female bodybuilders. It ain't going to happen, guys. One, your genetics probably ain't that good. And two, these guys, you know, especially now, I mean, it's chemical warfare where some of these ladies are taking a lot of stuff, which is getting them to the, the point that they're getting, I guess, you know. And right now it's just it's bigger is better and freakier is better. Like, and that just is what it is. Yeah, I think great answer. It's. Yeah, you're not going to get swole um, diet, like Johnny said, and and weight train. And this is not just, I know that this individual is a woman and she asked for specifically for women. Well, look, mm -hmm. look, I said specifically. Don't ask me to spell it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's for guys and girls. Again, it takes time. Yeah. We're not saying you can't get swole. You can't get jacked. But it takes time and it takes calorie intake. So if yeah. she's not trying to get swole, just taking the proper amount of calorie intake to where she gets leaner and, and retains her muscle. So it looks even more uh, appealing to her. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, you can definitely gain muscle and burn fat at the same time, guys. I mean, and listen, weightlifting is the best thing for you because we know that weightlifting burns more calories than doing cardiovascular training. As, as far as that goes, the more muscle you have, the more fat you're going to burn in your body too as well. So, I mean, weight training is definitely the way to go. I think it's been proven over and over and over. Um, and I think that everybody needs to embrace that and, and just be quiet, put your head down, go in the gym and start doing some weight training. And you don't have to go lift a million pounds, but go do some work. Be patient. Be patient. Patience is the key. Johnny, next question here is from a young man that says, uh, Big John, I would like to know the best way to grow my leg, and he used this word, to grow wide legs. Mm, okay. Yeah, so he's want to get right big legs. It. Yeah, you want to get big legs, but he used the word wide. I've never heard that term for like legs. Wide legs? Yeah. Hmm. Right, a cowboy, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, what's your take on that? To get bigger legs. Yes. What is your, your go to? So, my go to for therapy wise or training wise? Oh, I think all the above. I think therapy, food, training. Oh, dude, well, food, I was thinking I have to add in the calories. You're going to have to eat. You have to put some more calories in the body so it can build. That's one thing. So don't go in a calorie deficit and think you're going to build big legs, especially big wide legs, right? You know, definitely want to hit that. Now, well, me and Mike were talking last week. We were talking about color kind of recovery days. And, you know, I've kind of changed it up. In the beginning, this is what I used to do, Mike, is, you know, now I've given myself seven days to recover. Let's say I do chest on Monday, and then I go the next Monday and go do it, right? But in the earlier Wait, days, well, I, did you record this? You got that on tape? I'm holding them to that one. Keep going. Yeah, this is what we said, right? But before, like what I used to do in my training before, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start implementing this. I just started this week again. Was, you know what? Any, any body parts that I really want to develop even more or might be lagging body parts, as long as I'm recovering faster, then I'll hit it a second day. So like this week, I did Monday where I did chest and back. Well, Friday, because I trained every day last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I'm like, man, that's my fifth day. Hell yeah. I was like, let me work on some of these different body parts that, listen, I want to make it a little bit better. So that's when I started going. I, right, I did a little bit. I did two more exercises for chest. I did two more exercises for back. And I'm working these muscles a little bit more. And, you know, somebody might say, well, you know, you don't get enough recovery time. Well, here's the difference between me and maybe you as a person out there. Me, I am on HRT right? And testosterone will help you recover faster. So you can train harder and more frequently, right? Now, if you're really sore is, is, is crap and, you know, it's, it's hurting, give yourself the extra day or so. But for me, I'm like, I'm feeling good. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go hit this. As long as you're feeling good, I think that's the key to really work on or, or to think about. Like, so that's, that's kind of what I've been doing this week. I'm like, well, last week and then this week, I'll start for the next three weeks until I get to Olympia just to, to work on it. But um, that's what I would do. I would work out the, the, the body part maybe twice a week if you can and really get in there and really develop it. The legs, especially because legs, sometimes they grow for people and they're harder for other people, especially yep. calves. Calves. I, mean, I, I think it's a genetic thing. I mean, you know, cause I've seen guys just work their calves to death because when you think about two muscle groups that you can work every day, it's abs and calves. They say. So they say you can work abs and calves every single day. I don't know about that if you're super sore, especially if you're a super strong leg day and you're involving calves and you're doing like three exercises of calves and you're really, really just destroying them. The next day you're like limping, walking around. So I don't know about doing them the next day after that, but those are two things. So I would say, listen, if you really want to get big legs or you want to get any other body part really, really big, make sure you're recovering, yes, but try to hit it two times a week. I think you'll get some more development there. I like that. I like what he's saying. And it, let's stay on that for a second, because again, one of the big things is if you are doing HRT and let's say you guys are over at Titan Medical and you're working with them, feel free. I think I would, I would call up and say, Hey, I'd like to, I'd like to train more. Am I on the right, right protocol for right. me to want to train? I got, I, I got a, a triathlon I'm getting ready for. I'm getting ready for my, my, my 30th anniversary you know yep. it's whatever it is give them a call oh, yeah. and see what what they can do to help you recover better because remember there's so many other things that are over there at titan medical that can help you recover like the uh, hercules potion um the eaas everything so take it to the next level have that moment Absolutely. And, and 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 ignore 
ignore the trainers at the gym or social media going, you need to take this many days off. At a certain point, go crazy. Have fun with it. And, and again, when I get ready for this last movie we did, I was training 12 times a week. Well, wait yeah. a minute. There's only seven days in a week. Son, I was going twice a day. Yeah, two days. <laughs> two days. And six days, one day off. And Jeff would say, uh, and, and the game plan was one day off. And then I, Jeff would say, uh, uh, what time tomorrow? I go, no, I'm taking it off. Okay, just text me when you know what time. <laughs> Yes, you know that's how we roll over here. So it, 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 I, I would like to take the days off and stuff, but there's times to go ballistic, have fun with that. Absolutely, have fun with it. And Johnny's stepping up the next level, and that's yeah. what I got to do too. This next three weeks, getting ready for the Olympia booth yeah. seven thirty two, yeah. Titan Medical at the Olympia. Just look for uh, look for the stage. Look, look for us on the stage. stage. You should see us on a high rise stage, man. So look at us. We'll be above everybody yeah. else. Look for the line. Look for the line. <laughs> and the big tight <laughs> magazine cover in the background. <laughs> With that being said, that ran out of questions on my question, Jeffrey. Do you have any questions for Johnny? Yeah, we, are, uh, we are blown up here. And I, I want to re say again when you do work with Titan medical or something like that, you can train more than the average person. So Absolutely. you utilize that, utilize that recovery that you're recovering quicker. And then I love what Johnny said about stop, stop the program. Monday's chest, Tuesday's arms, back yep. is Wednesday. Pick your body parts that are weak. Yep. Legs are weak on you Monday and Friday or Saturday. Do it, Absolutely. you know, on Friday, um, you, you got no arms do it again on tuesday and saturday yep. it's like yep. put them in there absolutely i mean i think that's been a game changer for sure i mean you remember the old rich piano videos even jim stepani like he'll tell you like i remember i remember piano he said like our the ultimate arm workout is like you want to go your arms bigger he's like go home every night get a dumbbell that's 10 pounds and do 100 of those things knock them out until you can't bring up your arm anymore and it's true, right? But you know, I, day after day, you want to give yourself some rest, I guess, for that muscle recovering to repair and to get bigger. Unless you're on HRT or something like that, that's going to expedite your results as far as recovery and being able to train like that. So, um, but it's it's doable. I don't I don't know about doing it every day, but two times a week for sure. <laughs> but the, the the concept is there. Go crazy. Absolutely. Throw Absolutely. the rule book. Throw the rule book out. Absolutely. something that you like. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, you guys know when it comes to getting ready for a show for me, I'll purposely train the abs every day to overtrain them, to cause atrophy. Yes. To get that small waist after lifting for 45 years on exercises that are supposed to thicken your waist. So, <laughs> you know, it's like you throw the rule book out. It doesn't work the same for everybody. That's just true. Jeffrey. Um, hey, Mike, tell me, are you familiar with ten tendinopathy of the ligaments and how do you cope with it? I do not. I do so not I, I do, do I do know what it is. Go for so it. So basically, like this is the condition in which tissue connecting muscles to bone becomes inflamed. That's what this is. So you get inflammation, right? Yeah. Of the ligaments. So what do we want to do? We want to get anti-inflammation, right? We want to get something to take away the inflammation. So there's a, a couple of different ways you can go with this. One's BPC and TB five hundred. This is teed up for that. Like you want to take away inflammation, you want to help out this. That those are going to be the main ones I would go with. After that, glutathione is great for taking away inflammation too, as well. Um, so those are probably be my go-to um, without taking like any NSAIDs or anything like like, like that, like the Colfenac or anything like that. I would stay away from those if you possibly can, and then go with something like BBC and TB500, where it's going to take that inflammation out. Um, and at that point, you'll feel a lot better because obviously inflammation and in those connecting tissues like that is not going to feel good whatsoever. And it actually creates like a burning sensation for a lot of patients. I like that. Great answer. Uh, do you think a heart rate monitor is useful with resistance training? I mean, it can be. Any, any data you're going to collect on yourself can be useful. Are you going to use that data, right? Is there some some reason why you need a heart rate monitor where you're trying to get this data? Um, that's the question, right? Because, you know, if you run an EKG and then you have an abnormal EKG, they're going to want to put one of these heart rate monitors on you for two weeks. 
I know because me and Sharice just went to the cardiologist because we were going to get some tests run, like echocardiograms and all that. And she had something different when they wanted to put this on her for like two weeks, you know? So, you know, if you need to put it on you and there's some abnormality that's going on in the body, or you went to a, a cardiologist or physician and they say, Hey, listen, you need to put this on, then that might be a useful thing because you're going to have to need to see what, what's going on. But in resistance training, I mean, I guess you can see where your heart rate's at and all that. I mean, it's good information. Any information is good information when you're collecting, especially when you're training like that. And we have more, technology than ever to be able to take all this information, whether it's your Apple iWatch or your Fitbit or a heart monitor. I mean, I've seen a lot of different things. Um, I know Apple very shortly will hopefully um, they're in a big fight with it right now. We'll be able to look at your heart rate. Uh, it'll be able to give you an EKG through the watch and it'll be able to tell you your sugar levels through the watch. This is without sticking, without blood. That's crazy. So hopefully we get that tech here very shortly. I know uh, we have on this new uh, program, um, Total Recall, uh, we're hitting reps at 12s. And so when you're doing deadlift for 12 or squats for 12, um, it's just interesting for me. I, I got the uh, see yeah. the watch. Um, it's just interesting to me to where my heart rate goes to and then how long it takes for me to recover on those yeah. exercises. And yeah. I think if – if you can be patient in the gym, I, I recommend letting your heart rate come all the way back down before doing the next set. Sure. So it comes in handy in that sense. And then I think, you know, um, yeah, I think you can do it. And I if you like, I, I'm a note taker. I like notes. I like trying things. And it's fun for me to see how long it takes me to get my heart rate back down after we're doing four sets of 12 with, you know, 500. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, are we doing another set or am I going to the hospital? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? You don't want your heart rate to get too high. I know like if people are like trying to burn a lot of calories while they're, they're training, they're super setting through, they're not taking breaks. They're going from one exercise to the next. It's fine. But I mean, listen, if you want to get stronger and you want to have really, really good sets, Mike has a great point. You need to have a, enough rest time to do that. And you'll see, right? Like if you do a set, I did dumbbell press the other day. I did 90 pounds. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to the hunters next. And I gave myself at least a minute, minute and a half where, you know, you're not as restricted as far as blood flow because you're not as pumped, right? You just didn't get down to the set. And you're giving enough, enough time to recover to the sense of where you're going to be able to get a, another good uh, set of reps in. Because if you don't, and let's say you only wait 20 seconds, you're probably not going to get as good of a set than you would if you rested a minute, minute and a half to two minutes. And it just all depends on how much you need, right? And that's something you should look at your watch. And that's something where the heart monitor can really tell you, hey, listen, this is where you need to be at. And this is how much time you need in between sets. And then you just start looking at your watch. And honestly, over time, if you do this and you're in there all the time, you're very consistent, you'll probably recover a lot faster. It's it's funny you say that because I, I think people move through weightlifting much too fast. And I oh, yeah. don't think they realize it, um, especially if they don't have workout partners, you know, they, they do their set and they sit down and then, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds in today's world is a long time. If you're not yeah. on the phone or doing something yeah. and you're like, uh, okay, 45 seconds, I'll do another set. Yeah. And so yeah. that's one thing I say that take the time in between um, uh, and recover. So you can go that 90, then go to the hundred, then maybe one ten. Right. Um, because again, for me, I, I I like the fact that you're getting a compounded four sets with that kind of weight instead of the guy that's moving so quick and he goes 90, 70, 50, 20. No, and it's man, like, oh, yeah. but I'm fatigued. It's like, ah, uh, but it's weight lifting spelt differently. Yeah. So, yeah. You want to progressively go up, not down. Up. Like Kelly today. Yeah. Kelly took my, my training partner, crushed me today. Really? Yeah, crushed me. Shoulder day is his big day. He's, you know, 360 pounds, so oh, he's happy. He's happy. He's like, I got you today. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. I love it. Get that way, uh, man. Jesus. Yeah. How much stretching do you guys do per day, especially after hard strength training? Uh, this is where I fall short, guys. I don't stretch enough. I stretch like, hey – <laughs> Johnny does some stretching. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you, I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing, right? I mean, he's partner stretching later with some good hip motion. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm doing I'm doing that with Sharice later on in the bedroom. But at that point, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, listen, I think stretching is essential. I think that's the biggest part and one of the biggest things that I'm missing out on right now is mobility and stretching. Like if you lift and you train real hard, you're gonna tighten up. Like you're gonna tighten up, your muscles are gonna tighten, everything's gonna tighten. And this is kind of where massage comes into play, stretching comes into play, you know. Taking those hot jacuzzi baths, loosen up those muscles too as well. I think that's a, a a big one with like Epsom salt too if you want to do it in a bathtub. But I think that, you know, stretching is key. Uh, foam rolling. Like I wasn't a big foam roller ever, like ever. But I've seen Peter do it with his legs and stuff like that. And I've seen a ton of these other athletes do it. And listen, it gives them great benefits. So, you know, I, I think that all those things are, are very beneficial. And I think that you're going to have a more healthier body if you're more mobile, flexible, um, and able to stretch. Agreed. Uh, I stretch every day in the exercises that I'm doing. And so there'll always be a fascia exercise at the end of my training. So yeah. you guys know the fascia is what it's the sack that holds the muscle. And if you can get the fascia to open, yeah. you have more room for the muscle. And so that's why flies were created. They open up sure. the dips, you know, a yeah. good sumo deadlift or something. So whatever exercise like today was, uh, shoulders so it was just opening it up and coming all the way back and open up that shoulder so i can keep moving it mm -hmm. um i think it's great i, I agree with johnny stretch yeah. to keep yeah. your flexibility if you have to keep well right behind strength keep as strong as you possibly can but flexibility mm -hmm. is a key element to longevity it really is i mean i can still touch my toes i can still sit on the ground grab my feet and all that so thank god i can still do that but you know, like there's certain things like when you get bigger and you have more muscle, like I, if I do it my left hand, cause my, my shoulder is gone, but you should be able to touch like the middle of your back on both of these ends. Like there's different things that they, they say like, you know, this is what you should standardly be able to do. And, uh, you know, I can't do that no more. I can barely do a parade rest with the back of my arms. It's crazy. Last time I touched my toes was at a P Diddy party. So that's uh... <laughs> The freak offs <laughs> too soon, <laughs> too soon. Yeah, too yeah. Soon. why was I touching my toes? I love it. I love it. Little Johnson and Johnson oil layup. <laughs> does, uh, does BTC help with mobility? Oh, is what? Like hold on, hold on. There, this is a great one. Um, I feel like I've read online, of course, um, that BPC can help with like mobility and like your flexibility in the joints. Uh, I, I, as far as taking down inflammation and being able to do that. So like when I shoot in the mornings, I have more mobility in my shoulder. It's real stiff and feels like pinched. And then when I take the shot, that's when I'm like, Oh, cool. I got a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more mobility. The inflammation's down. I think that's the real key to that. Um, but yeah, game changer for me, for sure. Like I'm still lifting like everything like that, which is, it's kind of crazy. I mean, just even benching, when I'm in there benching, like these young trainers come up to me in lifetime. They're like, man, you know, that's pretty good. Like, you need a spot and stuff like that? And I was like, no. Nah. And I'll tell them, like, yeah, I need a total shoulder replacement. Like, you need a total shoulder replacement? You're benching like that? I'm like, yeah. And I don't get no pain because I'm doing good form. I'm making sure my elbows are really tied in. You know, when you start flaring out and stuff like that, that's when you start putting more stress on there. So as long as I stay tight like that, then I'm, I'm pretty good to go lifting-wise. I think the most pain that I get shoulder wise is when I sleep on my shoulders during nighttime. And that's when I wake up and like, oh. yeah, the the old the old uh, I I got must I must have five pillows, big pillows. Yeah. I yeah. I crowd them under, over, side. Um, yeah. I'm a pretty good sleeper. I don't know how Mona and Titan are straight face down, and I'm like, how are you sleeping like that? I used to be I used to be a stomach sleeper and sleep on my side like this. But after I broke my collarbone, you had to sleep. You had to sleep on your back. You can't sleep on your side or anything like that. Now I try to like get at least on one of my sides, but I have a whole bunch of pillows too. I have like six pillows, and I like get on the pillow so my shoulder doesn't slip out at night. You know, so I'll just go on there and leave it up. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's key too. You know, comfortability in your bed is that's key for sure. That's key. Yeah. I know. A couple more, couple more questions no before more Johnny. Questions Johnny you out of here, Johnny's got to head off. <laughs> Uh, and I am correct that Peter's varsity. Yes. Yes. So the chances here is we got a, a three year letterman coming. Yes. He's starting you know, today. I so love I'm, it. I'm pumped. First game of the year, man. I'm like, this is awesome. This is a great. So I am well tonight. I'm pumped for you, man. This yeah. kid, I want to, I want to see, please send video, whatever you get. 
I will. I promise. I promise. All right. What do we got here? All right. It says, hi, Mike. I'm 70 years old, suffering from permanent dryness side effects from Accutane. It severely ruined my mental health and confidence. Do you have any advice? So I've took an Accutane, guys. I think it's a hell of a drug. It works phenomenally. Like if you have acne and you can't get rid of your acne, Accutane yeah. will get rid of it. The negative side effects to Accutane. It will severely dry you out. I'm talking to the point where, like, I had to carry around chapstick with me 24-7, apply it all day, every day. Because if not, if you smiled, did anything, your lips cracked and you bled. The other negative side effect is it could affect the liver. It could be hitting the liver. So they usually blood test you when you're on Accutane. But usually you stay on Accutane for about six months. Now, I would say if you have the permanent dryness side effect from Accutane, you're going to want to start looking at different lotions to apply. Um, you know, when you say you have severely ruined my mental health and confidence, is this because you're so dry on your face or what is going on as far as that goes? Because you're going to want to use a lotion and then you're going to want like, like a sensitive skin lotion, apply that. And then you're going to want to apply like, you know, like chapstick and you're going to want to carry that thing around with you all the time. But when you're done with your Accutane protocol, Everything should probably go back to normal. And yeah. at that point, like you won't deal with any of this dryness effect that you had being on Accutane. Did you do it when you were uh, going through puberty or is it after? Or? Uh, I did it. No, I that's when I, I did, did it. I did it when I was like 20 years old. You were 20. So you were a late bloomer. 20. Yeah. I, had, I had acne a little bit like growing up and stuff like that. But then I started getting it like, like on my back my shoulders i'm like what and i wasn't taking any tests or anything back then so there wasn't anything like oh this is hormone related like right right so uh and i didn't know what i know now so at that point like i went to the dermatologist like listen accutane my dad had really bad acne i get back in the day whatever so i just attribute to that and he put me on accutane and i was like all right cool and then at that point like literally like six months later he took me off accutane uh and everything was great but during those six months i don't want that dryness it's like and I was just talking to one of our other people about it today because they were on Accutane inside the office and we were just comparing, you know, how it was for them to us. And it happened, it happens to everybody, that dryness effect. And that is why your skin is like that. It's why it, it clears up because there's nothing in there as far as that goes, oil wise yeah. or anything else. Yeah. It's crazy. So, so you took Accutane? I did. I, I, I did uh, going through the late stages of puberty because, uh, again, acne, acne yeah. in school and stuff. Um, yeah. and so I'm just thinking back to, I did come off it. Um, and I tried to just really, uh, make sure the nutrition was on point, which helped at that stage too. But Absolutely. acne is one of those things that's guaranteed for when you're going through those, you know, those developmental years. So I, I hear you kiddo, um, try to keep the diet as clean as you can. And as soon as your skin is cleared up and stuff, if you can maybe yeah. go off. Uh, yeah. and see how your body is reacting at that point. Absolutely. Well, like Thank I said, you for the question, kiddo. Yeah, that was a good one. That was definitely a good one. And listen, when you're 18, tight medical center can help you 18 years and up. If you guys are looking for help in any of these situations or scenarios that we're talking about. I need a banger. I need a banger, Jeffrey. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you, Brian. How are do you up? ensure long-term joint health by lifting heavy? And what preventative measures would you recommend? Well. I think Mike is the golden child of this one because he probably has the best joints for his age than anybody I know personally, especially me, my joints are shot. So, you know, at that point uh, to ensure long-term joint health, I don't know. I start making sure those connective tissues are warmed up and they're getting stronger uh, along with the muscle that you're building. Cause muscle is going to get bigger and stronger faster than those tendons or joints are going to get. So at that point you need to focus on that. Preventative measures from my stance, like I said, start small, go heavier, BP. and BBC 157 and TB 500. That is what I recommend for anybody out there as a preventative or to treat acute or chronic pain. So wherever you lie, if you're preventative and you don't have any pain, this would be a good thing to do, especially when you're asking about preventative measures. The next thing would be, would be, like I said, the preventative measures, and then at that point, if you have chronic or acute pain, this is going to help too. I, I think Johnny hit it out of the park. And just for anybody that's on here, um, 
there's a lot of talk about rep range for building muscle. You're going to be able to lift for a lifetime if you think about not just your muscle, but everything else attached to it. Uh, mileage is mileage. So at the end of the day, you know, if you're going in there doing 30 reps on everything with 10 pounds, you're just putting mileage on there. Um, there's a couple studies, Wolf's Law and Davis Law. So Wolf's Law is the study of making your bones superhuman. And Davis Law is the study of connective tissue and ligaments, making it stronger. And both come from the breaking down and making them stronger as you continue forward in your yeah. training. And so that was the, one of the main principles on my power bodybuilding and why I've been able to do this for so long. And also it's just go into the gym, do the least amount of work possible, still get better, but don't be one of these guys that yeah, I train three hours and I kick everybody's ass in the gym. Great. It doesn't work that way. It's too much, man. It's, it's, it's too, too much. much. And too much. Too it's much. not, a, it doesn't hype us up. No, gotta work hype, smarter, not harder. Yeah, this is a chess yeah. match. Don't play checkers. Yeah. And speaking of games, Johnny's got to go. He's yeah, got to come to do. Man, thank you, Johnny. We'll hit up again thank this week, guys. man. Send me video. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. And I definitely will, man. So hopefully people will go, people will go kick some butt. If anybody yeah. needs help, you can call or text 727-389-3220. Therapy of the week, testofenzine. Brand what new peptide the? therapy, oral what? therapy, weight loss therapy comes in two different versions, 250 micrograms, 500 micrograms. What does it do for you, right? It's going to make you happier. It's going to help curve your cravings for salty or sugary items. And it's also going to create more energy expenditure. That's right. Testofenzine. You can complement your semi-glutide, tears epitide, or any other weight loss therapy or any other therapy with this. The only contraindication, the big one, is if you're on antidepressants, this is not going to be a good therapy for you. If you're not on antidepressants, this is probably going to be a good therapy, and it will complement any of the other therapies that are on with us. So I mean, everybody's looking for new weight loss, 25 bucks off the therapy package. The 250 micrograms is 200. The 500 micrograms is 300. So you get almost double the medication for only 100 bucks more. I try to make it a deal so people would want to get the higher dose to get better results. That's how I'm gonna leave you guys. That's how you. That's that was the banger right there, guys. There's the website right there, TitanMedicalCenter.com. Get on over there, get signed up today, and touch base with them. And we'll see you guys, Johnny. Have a good game. I appreciate it. Puff Days on. He says, Johnny, I'll see you at the party. I'm not seeing no, no puffy parties. <laughs> no ditty for me. No ditty. Bye, guys. <laughs>